Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound and while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound please. Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes to understand how this practice will help for us to develop our inner wisdom. So when it comes to wisdom here, we have to remember it is not a kind of like this conventional knowledge. Because this conventional knowledge depends on the theories and the methods and the time and the space. And according to the capacity of our experience and according to the capacity of our words. But when it comes to the deeper wisdom means the true reality that happening within us. So that not a kind of like intellectual knowledge. You can gain it by experiencing it. To experience that, you have to develop a method because why you have to develop a method, you have to get into a method, you have to practice your method, because in day-to-day -day life, we go with the conventional knowledge and we go with the conventional wisdom. Because of that, we are slowly disconnecting from the, the true nature. So then get, get back to that connection, you have to develop a method. So that's why the practice is very necessary. So that doesn't mean everybody need to practice the same way, person to person, according to their lifestyle and according to their understanding, according to their experience, things can be different. But most of the time what happens, we are developing a method ourselves to become so comfortable and in this conventional knowledge and conventional wisdom, we develop a pattern to be with that. And even the happiness and the satisfaction and even the 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 liberation or the transformation, we have our own interpretations and we try to develop it with, within our day-to-day -day life. And because of that, little by little, we are slowly go far away from the, the very true meaning. So then yourself, you have to look into your own deeper life and see, out of your own experience, out of your life, 
what you really understand. So that understanding should not come to you because of you learn something from somewhere, from some book or you heard from something like that. If you look into your own inner life, you will see that your life already grown. You already go through the time and experience and situations so that that expanding nature itself gave you some kind of knowledge to you in the conventional life. And it is not something that you learn from books, but it's, it's still, it's, it's there with you. And even if you look very carefully, you can't exactly find how you found this knowledge. Because that transformation, through when you go through time, when you be, become young, when you become adult, when you grow, the growth means that development itself, you have some experience. So then, in, when it go into your deeper inner spiritual life, if you look very carefully, the, the same thing happen. Out of your practice also you gain something. So only thing is you have to look into yourself and see. In this conventional life, that whatever we understand and whatever we know, of course it's work for the place or the time and for the environment. But by the time, it's not going to become a wisdom for us to, to get out of the, the becoming or get out of the, the death or get out of the birth rather than the death, it's get out of the birth. Because most of people try to stop the, the death, but according to the, the Dhamma, it's nothing to do with the death. Can you stop the, the birth? So that is the key point you have to look. And if you can stop the death, you're not going to die. So then why are you born again after you die? So the same thing, if you look into yourself in this very moment yourself, this, not, this moment is not the ending moment in your life. Just imagine yourself that for tomorrow, day after tomorrow, you already develop the world. So then, if you can't, can't come to very this moment to settle down yourself, even within your inside mind, just forget about the, the outside things. Of course, the outside things we, we have to maintain, but look into yourself and see in this very moment, can you a little bit close your eyes and settle down yourself and thinking, this is the only moment you, you're going to be. You can't. Because your mind already keep running, keep running, keep running. Over. It already gone. Far away from this moment to future. So how, how it go like that? What is the power it push forward? That is our inner desires. So if, then if you look into yourself, why this inner desires come like that way? Because we already develop some kind of cravingness, wanting within us. That's why it's it's keep going like that. So when you have that cravingness, it's it's kind of like a like a bull, and it, it always and if the if the young strong bull, you know, and if somebody have a bull cart, they will catch you. And, you know, tied to that bull cart. The bull has no power to escape from the cart. 
somebody will catch. Look at the animals. Look at the horses. If the well, you know, strong, healthy horse, that horse itself has no power to escape from situations. Somebody will catch that and start to, to use it for something. Even just a dog, just imagine, you, you are just a, you know, just a healthy puppy, you know, just a start to run around your neighborhood, what will happen to you? Somebody will, you know, <laughs> take you. See that that's always there is something which we can't see is is always catch us, take us. So that is the danger with this running desire. It's nothing wrong if you if you are so safe and you know nobody come around and you. You just only you can, you know, run yourself to even the yuns by yuns by yuns. It's, you know, but it's not going to happen because there is no just a single event happen itself. That one single effect that the event unfold because of many reasons. So then your future it's danger means it's nothing wrong that you have a desire, you have wanting, you you go towards something. But the thing is, the whatever you want, it's not come, going to come alone behind you. So that's why stopping this becoming is the real key point. So for that in the beginning, how you can develop some kind of wisdom within yourself and practice. So in the beginning, to be very limited to your senses. When you see something, you be with it. When you hear something, you be with it. When you smell something, you be with it. When you taste something, you be with it. When you are around somebody, you be with that person. Even when you think something, you, you be with that. So then that running nature start to slow down. And at the same time, what will happen that all the perception become very clear to you. So that clarity itself show you whatever the perception is, valuable or not valuable, profitable or not profitable, wholesome or unwholesome. It's not, it's not going to come out of the, the judgment. It's come out of the moment of experience and moment of being with it. It is a totally different knowledge. Just imagine, just uh, you, you used to be in a place kind of like uh, it, it gave you so comfortable and it, it's kind of like a serene and peaceful, calm, relaxed and you like to be in that place. So now, so maybe your birthplace, your, your house, the place you grow and now you are far away from that place. And you can think about it. And you, when you think about it, you have some kind of understanding about it. But how about if you go into that place? Once you go into that place, you no need to think about that place because you are already there. That when you be there, what happens? You start to feel that all around you. 
So the, the, that is an outside example. So meditation means when it comes to tranquility state, what happened, you start to feel yourself the same like that comfort in you. Because most of the time we are separate from us. We are going away. We are running away from us. But now you being within yourself and in that very moment, it brings the completion to you. So it is not a kind of like a thinking and understanding experience. There's nothing to think because you, you just, just you be, be with yourself. In that very moment, you feel the, the comfort. You, you feel kind of like a, Tranquility state and you, you feel kind of like a containment. Otherwise, we always look into something, look into something. So, then yourself, you have to remember. And today, when it comes to our day-to-day -day life, no, we we all it's it's kind of like a, when we go to animal nature, they always into something. Maybe looking for or a target to attack, or maybe they're afraid somebody will attack. So that's why they always you know look here and there. Even they go to sleep, you know. They, they always have awareness to escape from the, the, that, that sleeping mood. So that's the animal nature. And even though in these big cities, you know, we, we, we kind of, we have the same kind of behavior. We go behind the bills mortgages and settling down you know this that you know you want to settle down yourself and once you settle down and then you have to put your children in a place and you go into do you running here and there and you put them there and then after that your grandchildren you have to settle down them it's always you look you into something and at the same time just imagine, even though you do this all, the, the, the deeply unrest within yourself also. So that, that's why sometimes it's, it's, you know, even we go to sleep, it, it's, it is very difficult for us to turn off the phone nowadays. We, we always keep it on. Why? It may, it may not, you know, be addicted to the phone sometimes. And maybe other people, in case we have sometimes fear, if something happened to other person, they need to call us. See? That then you keep it next to you while you're sleeping. And so then you go to sleep underneath, you know, silently, your mind awake. So that unrest is everywhere. But that if you look very carefully, that unrest, we can't get out of that is the very nature of it. But you have to understand. It is not yours. That is the very nature of the mind and that is the very nature of the world. If you understand that, even it is there, you're not going to hold it to that mind. You allow it to be there. Otherwise, you always think, oh, it's my, 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 my. There is no end. 
and you are regarding yourself and re regarding a husband wife regarding your children regarding your grandchildren regarding your neighbor regarding your friend regarding your village city country regarding your world there is no end somehow something will find but you have to understand that is the very nature of this soul and even oh this uh, surplus level you no need to fix it you have to accept it and you have to recognize that nature and and that way it give you a wisdom for you not to hold it to that so when your mind expand when your deeper inner wisdom expand that is what happens you start to slowly shift from this conventional level of a struggle and conventional level of boundaries conventional level of tangles that's give deeper some kind of inner freedom even though it is there you don't claim it as yours and that itself give some kind of a space for you to to be with it without any struggle there was a young man and he want to find a kind of like a peace harmony tranquility state say so he was looking for an ashram and then he saw this uh, india there was a yoga farm and he went there and then after a few days he felt a little bit comfortable and he decided to be stay there and the the master told okay and gave a uh, one area for him okay this is the place for you and you can come and practice the yoga and at the same time you grow yourself and uh, you have you maintain this garden for you it's a kind of like a vegetable fruits flower garden so this guy was so comfortable and feel so relaxed no one to disturb now nothing to worry and he start to live and maintaining his garden so after a while one day he had a friendly discussion with the the teacher and the teacher asked how are you doing and he told i am doing very well my life is so good oh that's good to hear and how is your garden oh it is so green one day you should come and see and the teacher told okay we'll, we'll go and there and they walk and it looks so green and everything clean so green and the teacher look around and told oh that's so nice it looks so green and there is no any brown leaves there everything green even not kind of like a single you know like a yellow color leaf and the the teacher asks how you maintain this and this guy told oh early in the morning when i wake up the very first thing i do i take out all the the dry leaves even i don't keep any yellow leaves so that allow me to see the green every day and that make me so calm comfortable because i don't like to see any brown leaves so then the master told you are not you are not growing a farm you are living on that on the top of the the volcano because sometimes you know is the there is no place you find ever green it's just a you know very good marketing word and 
tree is not ca cannot be every day green. It need to dry. You know, it need to drop all the leaves, and it look like dead sometimes, miserable. Then again, you know, come back. That's how it is. You know? So, look at the the you know the here this in front of the temple we have this peach tree and uh, last few months i thought it's already dead you know i was thinking now it's time to take it out and after the rain now it is start to give flowers and i was thinking you know see how how the nature that, that's the very same thing with our life also So if we try to maintain that every day look nice, then one day it's going to become so miserable for us. So, then, but you understand the very nature of life, then you don't touch it. You you experience, you accept it, and you go with it, rather than with the preconditioned mind. You try to hold it, maintain it, govern it, control it and develop it and then it becomes something else. So that is what most of time happened to this creativity. Because most of time people out of their own just emotions or trigger thoughts, they create many, many things. They create arts, they create songs, they create movies. And then it, it doesn't make any sense. And there was a research done in Harvard University a like, few years back regarding the tattoos. When the very, very first time when the tattoos start to come to this mainstream, they did the, the research. And it's a kind of like a very expression of the creativity. And they went to places and they asked, how it, it, it looks so beautiful. It looks so nice, perfect. And from where this idea came? Oh, I, I just, you know, I just did it. And sometimes they, you know, they have no idea. They just did it something. And they then other people appreciate it's the result of creativity. So that's how we are keep going nowadays like this. And they, they, there are many other things will come to our life. And it, it going to become good for the moment and it feel good for us also for a moment. And maybe if you look into your own life, you may see there are many moments that you felt so high in your life. You felt kind of like everything good and complete, but then the very next day it's gone. And you have no idea how it happened and where it went and how to maintain anymore. So why it happened like that? Because sometimes when we interfere with the deeper emotional needs and it trigger things which we don't see from where it come and then we mostly caught up with our comfort zone or the emotions or the needs and then we maintain it again and again and again. So that's the very nature of this life. How far you have to go, there's no end. So your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind has so many opportunities around the world. Until you die, you can just sit on the couch and keep watching 
many, many movies or the TV programs or many things. And there are many cable stations nowadays will provide you, keep watching, keep watching. It doesn't matter, you die. We don't care. Keep, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. For listening the same. There are many things keep coming to you. Keep listening, 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 listening. And uh, smell the same. And the food the same. There are many food will keep coming. Eat, eat. This is for you to eat. This is for you to eat. Billion, billion years you can keep eating. This is not going to end. And the people the same. There are many, many billion, billion people you can associate. You can go partner to partner, partner to partner, changing, changing, changing. You will die born again. You will die born again like that. And even the mind the same. Many creativities you, you will bring towards you. And for the moment you feel kind of like so good, but in the very next day, it makes you miserable. So this is the very nature of life. It is the, the, that is the very fundamental quality of this conventional world. That's how it survived. That's how it survived. This conventional life, samsara means it eat, it, it eat you. And you have to eat whatever it provides. And that's how the both going to grow. You eat the world, world eat you. And that's how it grow. You know, you eat for the food, the body, and the body eat that yourself. That's how you survive. So then you have to remember where this is going to end. There's no end. But if you come to the moment, just being, settling down and find the completion in this very moment without running here and there. In that very moment, what will happen? You are capable to settle down and see underneath this all, the, with the thoughts, there is a deeper current desire or the wanting. So once you see in that very moment what happened, the, desire, the very nature of the desire, it's not going to come to pace to pace. Remember that. Try to find it. Try to find, I will challenge you. Try to find your desire. It's never going to come pace to pace. That's the very nature of it. When, the, when you try to find it, you, you, you see it, it looks like this and then it's going to disappear to something else. But if you try it, if it is disappear to something else, that is good because that is how it becomes weaker. It, it has no power to come face to face and challenge for your consciousness or the awareness. Why? Because it come out of the illusion, it come out of the dream, it come out of the, the kind of like creation, creativity. So then that displacement make it weaker. And when it weaker, then when you keep looking, keep looking, keep chasing, go behind, go behind, it's like a thief. When you go behind this, and then it drop more, more power. And it's kind of like a suppression. It's not going to come against you. So then by the time, and on, on the surface level, what you saw, most of things disappear, disappear, disappear. And by the time you are capable to get into the bottom, So that is where that you can uproot that whatever the, the seed. It is not huge. It is something very little. But that little thing 
you didn't see it start to grow 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 and now you think it is something big so same like like most of the problems around us in day to day life if you look into the even this world wars you know war the go, war go around us everywhere whatever the problems come if you go into the very bottom the very beginning you see it is just a very simple thing and sometimes it is a very silly problem just look around your house inside your house whatever the problem come go to the very beginning then you will see it is start from the very silly thing but we didn't put the attention we didn't see it because of that it is start to accumulate more and more and more power around it and it calcified the that the, all the the unnecessary information and became more stronger that's how things happen so the awareness is the very key point rather than running learn to settle down be yourself and being yourself not just a part the the complete as a complete person experience the moment and giving you a kind of like a wisdom this is it and that moment you are not belong to a human being why because the human being always keep running and even the devas the the even the angels the everyone consciously or unconsciously keep running so that's why that when the buddha attained to the buddha then after that he went uh, some man uh, sat under a tree there was a brahman and he saw the footprints and he saw this person under the tree sitting very calm look very relaxed not any fear not kind of like a desire to look something or running away from something and ask who are you are you a human i'm not a human are you a god i am not a god are you a ghost i'm not a ghost and who are you i'm the buddha so awaken one so what is this awaken means because you also can awake so how you can awake just try to be then you will see you bring the connection to yourself in the moment without running and in that very moment you will say your eye ear nose tongue body mind and bring back the this entire strength or the current that you already put towards outside and it is start to to bring inward and settling down and that's why when the mind settle down everything settle down when the mind keep running this entire universe keep running behind it so try to give some wisdom to deeper into yourself inject into yourself and experience it so with that let's get into practice now a little bit so your right palm on your left and neck get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say so patweva o may i be well and happy three times
take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalation, exhalations happen itself. And when it happens, through the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so pray low strong, tall or short, big or small, Visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Hey, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya Maya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Bhadi Bhadi A Buddham Puja Mi Dhamma Puja Mi Sangham Puja Mi Adhaya Maya Bhadi Bhadi A Jati Jara Vya Adi Maranam Ha Paribunji Sami Idam Me Punya Kam Manga Sabakya Bhang Ho Tu Sab Dukkha Pamunchatu Bless you.